Hello and welcome back to Downtime Activities. Today we're going to be starting a new campaign, a new story, using a system that we've done some content on and have had lots of requests to do more on, and that is Savage Worlds. Uh, today our Savage Worlds campaign is going to be starting and taking place in a world like Deadlands, but not quite Deadlands. So it will be kind of a gothic-inspired new timeline of a kind of Wild West story. That being said, there's going to be a good amount of differences from the Deadlands lore, so if you're well versed on that, don't expect any of that to matter here. I've kind of come up with my own stuff. And also, don't expect this to be the same as normal US history. Uh, we're, we're going to be kind of in a different sort of story altogether here. Um, the most important things to note there are it's much later than the Civil War lasted in this timeline, but the Civil War is still raging on. The Civil War is fought for much the same reasons as it was previously. Uh, however, slavery is not one of those. Slavery is not legal, it's not a part of this. It's more like states' individual rights versus large federal government being the kind of clash between the North and the South. That may come into play at some point, but for this particular story, we're not on that East Coast, Northwest fighting, highbrow, high society, coastal living city, yellow bastard lifestyle. Those were words. Most of them. <laughs> this is taking place a little further out west, a little more centrally in the United States. Our story starts, well, it starts a little ways outside of, uh, of Raskatoon, the, the place where the real story begins. But before that happens, we're going to start out in the field, out in the plains, in southern Colorado. And here is where one of our players will receive a letter. He can read. Oh, I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Corporal, help is needed in the small town of Raskatoon, New Mexico, and you are the nearest available ranger. The sheriff of this town has gone missing, and the town is facing hard times. A nearby tribe of natives has been choking the town on supplies, and the people are getting desperate. You are, in, you are to act as the interim sheriff of Raskatoon. Order must be re-established, and the native attacks must be brought to an end. If you require a posse to complete this directive, then gather able-bodied folk from the town to assist you. Financial compensation for their efforts will be supplied in the form of a wage that can be collected from our nearby headquarters in Confluence City. You are to remain in Raskatoon until these problems are dealt with, and either the original sheriff is found or a suitable replacement is acquired by local legislators. Do not delay, as time is of the utmost importance in this matter. Texas Rangers Field Coordinator, First Sergeant William D. He's even got a nice little stamp on it, too. So it's authorized. I think we could probably have, well, that, yeah, up. We'll have that up on That'll the screen for everybody yeah. to read along at home. <clears throat> so, Corporal, you're out in the field uh, doing kind of normal Texas Ranger work before this. Um, you know, as a legitimate Texas get Ranger shot. yourself, get shot at, <laughs> shooting at others, uh, and you receive this missive. You know roughly where Raskatoon is. It wouldn't say that you're like, a, you've never been there before personally, um, but you you know where to get to a nearby, not all the way to Confluence City, which is kind of the capital of Colorado, uh, but <laughs> down south there's another decent sized town that you can stop off in and you're sure you can find a guy or someone there that can point you. Sounds good. I'll head that way. Doing so? Do you have a horse? I have a horse. He is a, uh, oh, my horse. He's a good boy. Let's see, I think I have. Uh, I think he's a discount horse, which was a very an El Chipo horse. An El Chipo horse. I did. Uh, You've reminded me that I need to name my horse. Oh no, maybe I didn't buy an Maybe I was the only you one. You might have gotten a legit horse. I think I got a legit horse. I'm like, I don't have any details on here. So I think I bought. I, I did not get an El Cheapo horse, which is a mechanic that. It would be a surprise mechanic for later. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Will you. Would you mind saying your name? Yes. Just for, for everyone's so sake. So I am. Uh, well, I'm Maddie G. But my character is James. Uh, <laughs> Mohan. Sorry. I read my own handwriting. Corporal James Mohan. Mohan. Uh, and I am a Texas Ranger. Uh, let's see, give a quick description. 
Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and d- describe what you look like. Okay, yeah. So, uh, short, crop, black hair, um, spectacle. Um, not like, I guess, intent, not like as a drawback as the system would have it, but spectacle. Looks very tired, I would say, is his defining. <laughs> looks, looks like he's been through some shit. Uh, and isn't, uh, has, has been through it, I would say. So, just a little rough around the edges. And I'm headed for Raskatoon, or Raskatoon adjacent. For, uh, yeah, you know Raskatoon, <laughs> like, Raskatoon is one of those things that if, you, if you're from the area, you've probably heard the name, but you've probably not been there because there's not a whole lot of reason to go there if you don't live there or work there. Um... And you head to uh, a nearby kind of northern New Mexico area, uh, a place called Moment. A town called Jasper. And Jasper's a uh, to call it a city would be a big, be a, be a, be a big leap. Jasper is probably not much bigger than Raskatoon, <clears throat> just located a little more on the beaten path. And so it's one that's traveled through more often. And arriving in Jasper, uh, what's your goal? What are you trying to do? <coughs> uh, I'll just head into, uh, let's say, the nearest general store. Okay. And ask the barkeep if he's got a map. <laughs> barkeep? What do you mean barkeep? <laughs> uh, shopkeeper. <laughs> Since he's a... Uh, Going to the, the Jasper General Store, uh, there is a uh, individual who. There's a, a fellow there uh, who introduced himself as David Pitts of the Jasper General Goods. And Jean Terrain. Says, uh, oh, he kind of straightens up seeing you walk into the building uh, with. What with, I assume, a, a badge a present bat, on the outside. A badge and a gun. And mm-hmm. <laughs> he kind of straightens up and says, I'm Officer, Jasper at your service. Excuse me, not Jasper. <laughs> <laughs> David <laughs> at your service. D- 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 <laughs> Welcome to Jasper. David at your service. Uh, how can I help you, sir? Uh, looking to get to Raskatoon. Rask- Raskatoon? I haven't seen much of any- anybody want to go to Raskatoon. Seen plenty of folk leaving there recently. What, are you there to sort out whatever the trouble is? More or less. Well, uh, I can't help you much, but I know someone who can. Well, that's what I'm hoping for. He says, there's a, a feller, a uh, bit odd, named by the name of Carl Bentley. Uh, he operates as a guide in town here. Not that you need much of a guide to get there, but he could have some useful advice on the comings and goings. And He's brought people to and from there recently, and seems to know the way to do that without attracting too much attention. I'll just point this Bentley out for me, and... Carl Bentley, he, you'll see him on the road south out of Jasper. He uh, has a small shack there. you see a, looks like a half-lame donkey out front. Well, the road south it is. I hope you sort out whatever's going on there. Too many good folk displaced recently from that place. Well, that's what I'll be trying. Okay, onward and upward and outward. Uh, you start heading that way. And going to the south of town, just like he described, there's a pretty rams shackle shack uh, <laughs> at the end of the road off to the side there. And you can kind of see two individuals there, actually. So you, the, he talked about a half lame donkey. There's kind of two animals look somewhat like that. The one seems a bit more heavily laden with uh, objects on the back of it. And you can see two individuals talking out in front of this shack. Uh, one of which I would like to introduce themselves now. Jerry, go ahead and... Describe your character for us. Well, <clears throat> my character is uh, a bit of an older gentleman. Uh, he he is. Uh, oh, you could you could say he is a uh, he's wearing a he's wearing a nice three piece suit, fedora. He's got a what I would describe as a Sam Elliott mustache because that's the only way I could describe the look of it. Um. He he goes by the name of uh, Professor Bogus, full name, <laughs> also his title. Uh, his his close friends call him Bo, but we don't get into that. No one here is your close uh, friend. Nobody here is a close friend, so everybody must call me Professor. That that is that is me. 
I am a well-educated man who doesn't have much need for, uh, or religions or things of the occult. And yeah, All right. that, that's me. And across from him is a, a, an individual who seems similarly aged, uh, you know, an, an elderly fellow, older at the very least. Uh, seems physically able, if, if not a little kind of knobbly and hunched. Uh, looks like a life of somewhat physical labor. He's got kind of big bushy beard that's pretty ratty and gross, and, and he wears a pretty wide curved up uh, hat on top of his head, long kind of greasy hair coming out of the back of it. And him, these two are, these individuals are talking as you approach. And it seems like this this gentleman with the curled up hat's doing most of the talking and fairly loudly uh, talking about, as you kind of walk up to the two of them, he said, yeah, sure, I can get you down there to ask you too. Cost you only a dollar. Mr. Bitley, I assume. <laughs> Speaking, call me Carl's. Carl's? <laughs> and he extends a hand to shake yours. Oh, I'll give it a shake. Mostly clean, a little clammy, but uh, well, it's a hot day out. Oh yeah. He changes it. Out, and he kind of, as he shakes your hand, he kind of notices the badge, looks with his good eye, whichever one that is. You're not exactly sure. He says, "Lawman, huh? Come here to bring peace and tranquility back to the valley." Uh, headed for Raskatoon. To to bring peace and tranquility there. Or you coming to raise more hell? Headed for Raskatoon. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the uh, Of course I'm. Well, uh, since you're a, a law, and he kind of grabs his suspenders and brings them up, since you're a man of the law, I can, of course, get you uh, a discount. One dollar. One dollar it is. <laughs> um, and if uh, each of you would like to pay the man a dollar, he seems <laughs> to be willing to, to show you the ways to get to Raskatoon. Luckily, I have a dollar. Uh, now, listen here, mister. I'm a bit hard of hearing, so I didn't hear a single word you just said. You want to repeat that for me? But, oh, yeah, all right, of course, right away! And he kind of walks uncomfortably close to one side of you and speaks directly into your ear. A little bit of, like, spittle splashing against the side of your head as he goes. He says, One dollar, and I can get you to rask a tooth! Did you catch that? One dollar to, to get me to rask a tooth? Yes, sir! Yes, I, I will pay you a dollar. Sure. <laughs> yes, I believe I will in fact do that. A reasonable course. <laughs> Let me load up Beatrice and we'll, we'll be on our way. And uh, he walks I, I, over I, to this half dead looking donkey um, that already has a small saddle on. He goes and kind of tightens the saddle up a little bit. Says, well, ready to go. <laughs> that donkey is right. alive, isn't it? <laughs> Beatrice, is there a sound of health? And a mighty steed, to say the least. Uh, and uh, I have a couple of questions for y'all before we get moving too far here. Uh, you got any food on you at the moment? Uh, I don't believe I do. And you there, Professor? What? You got any food on you uh, no all I have with me are my are my equip are my tools that I use for science and engineering I got some coffee <laughs> how much coffee you got Eat a certain amount of like a small bag yeah. <laughs> shouldn't cause too much trouble where we're headed, there's a native force not liking much uh, any sort of food deliveries being made. And we're taking the back roads, but that doesn't mean they won't be sniffing around nevertheless. So don't pick up any dry goods or anything like that before leaving town, as it could cause us trouble. I think so long as you'd stay off the main roads and don't bring too much along with you, though, they don't seem to raise too much of a fuss. I'd like to see I'd like to see the natives shoot up my mule Sam cause a big explosion about three miles wide. Well, now why is that? You got dynamite on that there, bro? No dynamite, but the kind of chemicals I have with me could cause could cause quite the fireworks display. 
I, I think mostly to use bow and arrow, so hopefully it won't be a problem. Nevertheless, if we're riding in a straight line, you're in the back and I'm in the front. As the guide, of course. Pulls up this suspension right. somewhere. <laughs> now, Professor, should I be concerned uh, as to how you acquired these uh, chemicals? No, no. I, you would have to have my, a permit. I got these chemicals from legit, from reputable salesmen. And you know, I mean, this I is the would, Wild West. There's not really, I, like, there's not like a, <laughs> an FDA or a, yeah. something that's like this I chemical. Yeah. It's like. <laughs> If they're using it for ill intent, then that's illegal. But uh, you can carry dynamite, you, right? That's you, li- you listen. Oh, that's he- you listen here, Mister. I am a professor. I need these tools for my science, and I ain't gonna be questioned by no youngin for what I do with my business. <laughs> yeah, that's fair, I guess. <laughs> 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 Carl's kind of say, well. If there's none other business you need to attend to here in Jasper, we could be on our way. Quick question about the native population. All right, then. Go right ahead. About how many are we talking here in this blockade? Well, it's not so much a bl- Now, blockade, now, that, now, as a former veteran myself, uh, I would say that a blockade be a strong word for such an encounter. Uh, they're not like throwing over barriers and stuff. It's more of a the people with large wagons riding by get attacked from places what they don't see and no survivors are left. No no perishable, non or otherwise are left to be uh, gathered. You ask me, again, as a, a learned man of war, I'd say that this is an intentional starvation tactic. You're trying to get something from that air town. Choke them out. It's a damn siege is what it is. I, know. I tell you, smoking them out ain't really gonna help them in the end. The thought that's gonna do is cause some blindness. Unless I heard wrong. <laughs> I said, <laughs> smoke them out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyhow, any other questions? Save them for the road. Let's pack up and roll out. You ever heard of Crooked Canyon? Can't say I have. Neither of you have heard of Crooked Canyon. Neither of you are from this exact area. Uh, and he says, Well, Crooked Canyon is the only way into an Adaraska tomb, save a main way road, what is constantly under barrage from these here natives. Crooked Canyon, I've found, is uh, less frequent. That's the way we're going to be taking it. He hops up onto Beatrice and uh, starts riding down the way. All right, I'll, we'll follow. Lumbering along, he kind of goes out this road a little ways, and then it kind of goes off on like a dirt road that goes up into the, a mountainous area a little bit, and it kind of goes up and then back down into a pretty, a decently wide canyon, um, wide enough that all three of your horses could walk side by side, but it's pretty sheer cliff edges on both the sides. Some that's more like a decent like slope that you could probably run up if you wanted to, but a lot of it's pretty pretty narrow and it's, it's maybe 20, 25 feet high uh, on either side of you for most of it. And uh, the, the riding starts and you guys are, he says that it, he told you it's going to take about a half day's ride to get there, so we'll be getting in fairly late here to rescue And uh, the ride starts. We're cruising. Okay. I don't think I have... How long you been a ranger for? I kind of like look at the badge. <laughs> hey, about five years. Did it tell you something? <laughs> Anyhow, now I was in the war. I told you before. I'm a soldier, I'm an infantryman up on the front lines. So there I was. <laughs> and uh, the stories begin. The stories begin. <laughs> uh, and unless you intentionally stop him, uh, there's, a, there's a good bit of probably a decent a bit of a building on the truth done but stories about how he single-handedly saved his battalion uh, multiple times and is a decorated war hero um as you're riding along there's no you kind of like i'll have both of you go ahead and actually uh roll me perceptions all right just to see what you notice around what uh a notice check a notice excuse me notice 
currently running campaigns in at least three RPG systems, so bear <laughs> with me, folks. Why can't every system just use the same <laughs> swath of skills? It would make your and my job in particular so much easier. Oh, uh, six explodes? A six. Nine. Nine? Uh, six and nine. Both of you, like, looking around, there's... Every now and then, just moving through this canyon, you kind of get the feeling you're being watched, but you never see anybody. There's never, like, anybody peering over the edge, anything like that. You see some amount of, like, signs of travel back and forth in this canyon, but nothing nothing in particular that draws your eye. One thing you do notice, and this isn't something that requires a check to notice, uh, is a as you're kind of maybe about halfway, judging by what he said on the timing of how long it would take, uh, to your location, a coyote kind of comes stumbling down the side of the, the cliff edge a little bit, and looking at this thing like, it's a pretty good example of what you assume Raskatoon is, which by that I mean it's scrappy, it looks half starved, you can kind of see its ribs up on either side of it, and it's kind of got matted and ugly fur, but it's a pretty big coyote, and it's kind of, it kind of like starts slowly walking towards and like sniffing at your horses as you pass by. Give it a kick. You give it a kick? Yeah, it kind of goes in there. <laughs> And it kind of like twists around and goes back behind the rock as you guys ride along past. Doesn't. doesn't That's like, a very brave coyote. <laughs> it just seems like it's maybe desperate. Who knows? But it, it was sniffing at you um, and seems not to like much getting kicked. But uh, didn't didn't follow behind you guys or anything. Okay. Quick, uh, sorry, rules question with sanity rules. <laughs> Other RPG systems. Um, when you have, like, notice, for instance, it's a smarts, mm -hmm. can I use my smarts die when I roll it? Or no. It no. Okay. This, your higher smarts makes it easier to, like, level it up. Basically. I, uh, for, for, I cheated. <laughs> on my oh. smart, on my first side. <laughs> I, uh, on my notice, I thought that it was, uh, you used your, I was using for the our other system. That <laughs> <here>. The one <laughs> we doing recently. So, yes. I, so, yes, okay, D4 minus 2, I remember. He rolled high enough anyways that you guys were confident that you couldn't see anybody watching you, apart from a, a ragged little coyote. Uh, now, as he kicks that coyote, I look over at him and I go, you better be careful. You don't want to catch that canine hepatitis that's going around. <laughs> How would one... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one moment. <laughs> Makes, to make an makes, important uh, note makes, about I was about to say, I was about to say makes note in, makes note of canine hepatitis <laughs> in the campaign docs. <laughs> It'll come back in session twelve. Session twelve when you guys get bit by a feral street dog and uh, end up getting the canine hepatitis. You have Jerry to thank for. It was foreshadowed. <laughs> it was foretold. The prophecy. A good dem a good DM always stands by their threats. Mm -hmm. And uh, it uses any good you. joke against the player. Did you just Chekhov's gun us, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> no, he Chekhov's hepatitis. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow, yeah. if, 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 it's, it's hepatitis. <laughs> if hepatitis <laughs> is brought up coming. in the first act, it's going to infect somebody in the third act. Exactly. I mean, uh, I did, you know, replay through Red Dead Redemption and stuff to kind of get an idea, and, like, you know, really get motivated for running this campaign, and so, of course... There's the tuberculosis arc. You're just gonna have your hepatitis arc, the same as uh, yeah. same as Arthur Morgan. Yeah, it's all it's all gonna happen at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another decent ways of traveling. Uh, eventually, you guys open out through this canyon into what appears to be a tired, sad little town. Uh, opening into it, you're. I'll actually go ahead and hand this out to you. Um, it's something that. You don't necessarily have, but you will get at some point, just to kind of get an idea of the layout of it. You'll be riding in from like the left side of the map, which would be um, coming in from the west, technically. Um, those are the kind of the businesses and stuff you see. You can see straight on ahead of you is uh, the ch what looks like a, a decent sized church. All these buildings are like wooden. The church has some stone to it, but most of these are wooden around here. Um, and you... Uh, that looking at it, you can see what looks like a post office on one side and a barber shop on the other as you're entering into town. Yeah. I'll ask uh, Charles here if uh, he knows where the sheriff's office is. Carl's. No, Carl's. Na name's Carl. Carl. I go by Carl's, so. though. What do you want to know? Where's <laughs> the sheriff's office? The sheriff's office. Well, see, now, sheriff and thing. It's right across from the saloon. Right, and the saloon. Now you see this right here, post office. 
Next to that's a store. Next to that's the saloon. And across the street from the saloon. Across the street. Yep. Good place for a sheriff's office. Um, Same <laughs> logic. <laughs> I'll thank him and oh, head that way. Fire shots in the <laughs> Professor, <laughs> nice talking with you. Now, now, listen here, Mark. Where where can I go find me an inn? <laughs> find you a what? An inn. An a place inn. to stay. Now, if you take your hard right and go down the other roadways, right at the sheriff's office, in fact, on the left, after the sheriff's office, there's a storefront. Past that's Gilliam's, room and board. That'd be where you're looking. Okay. And uh, if I can't help you fellers at all in any other ways, I'm going to be heading my way back to Jasper. In the night? Well, hell, I don't want to stay in Raskatoon <laughs> during the night. You boys have fun, though. <laughs> he slowly starts turning that uh, oh, <laughs> that wheezing, sad burrow and uh, rides back into the canyon. Well, that's a little ominous, but... <laughs> What? It's a bit ominous. No. Oh. <laughs> um, walking over, you can see, just like you described, on one, like, or you kind of see a left and right from there, and you can see on the map if it's near you. Um, there's kind of what looks like probably like a, a feed store on one side. On the other side looks like it just has outfitters written on the top. I don't know if that means clothing or like hunting outfitters. Uh, and then you can see what clearly has got the double swinging doors. It's uh, it's lit inside, but it's not like lit inside. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, 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 you know what I'm saying. It's, it's not a party in there. Um, like kind of walking up and looking in, you can see that there, it seems that there's a couple people sitting around here uh, and there is a bartender. There's a, let me actually go to... Uh, you can see, like, just kind of glancing because it's those double doors. There's, like, bartenders. There's just a couple people sitting around. There's no no party going on. And looking to the right, you can see there's the sheriff's office, sheriff's sign. You see the sheriff's sign was, like, hung from two ropes. One is cut, and it's kind of swinging instead there on one side. Um, and you don't see any lights or anything inside of it. Derek. Uh, well, first order of business, you got to prop the sign up. So... Go on, tie him it's up. probably a little uh, crooked, but if we're saying, uh, are you you're heading towards the sheriff's office, professor? Are you moving at the same like in the same direction he is, or are you heading towards that room and board? I'm kind of heading the same direction. I I, I I follow him enough to where I can eventually turn off towards the room and board. Okay, I'm not direct. I'm just kind of. Getting I mean, you kind of you guys have to go town. the same direction for you to get there anyway. So as he. If you kick something up here, you'll be nearby. You probably won't, but I've been surprised before. I turn and shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> shoot him. The he sword. just starts standing in the street, firing two guns. Now there. listen there. <laughs> this here's a stick up. Uh, so you go up and you kind of tie the knot, tie it back in, and then go up to the door. It appears to be locked. There's a window. <laughs> window lock. Uh, the window appears to not be it's not like a window in the sense it doesn't have glass and it's more of like a window frame like a crossed frame that doesn't seem like it opens or closes it just lets air and light in give it a look it's got shutters that are open you kind of peer into it and you can see an empty desk and across from that empty desk uh, empty jail cell looks dusty and unoccupied in there well I guess I'll turn and walk towards the saloon. Okay. Turn another way, go towards the saloon. So here's where you guys will be splitting if you're going towards the room and board and not the saloon, Professor. Okay. Okay. So here we'll, we'll follow the Professor first. As he heads over to Gilliam's. Uh, moving down that road there, you can see on either side of you a number of different shops. Looks like a blacksmithy and a general store, maybe a, a restaurant or something. You can't really tell. Um... You think it's a restaurant because there's a sign hung out front that basically says like no food uh, basically so you assume it's probably a restaurant or a food establishment of some sort some sort uh, and just past that is Gilliam's room and board and entering into there you can see a fairly bored looking lady sitting at the table there uh, she's she's still awake at the moment uh, but she seems like she's kind of sitting at the table and like like she wasn't really expecting anybody to be coming and getting a room in Raskatoon right now 
Yeah, so I, I walk up to the nice lady and uh, I, I, I greet her uh, and going, Oh, well, good evening, madam. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for some room and board for the night. I'm going to be staying in town for a few days. You're coming to stay in Raskatoon for a little while? Oh, why, why yes, you know. Uh, I, I had to get away from the big city, you know, and uh, I heard Raskatoon was just lovely this time of year. I don't know where you get your information from, but I'm not going to look a gift customer in the mouth. Isabel Gilliam, you can call me Beth, and she reaches across and shakes her hand. Says, uh, how many days you need to be staying here? Probably work out a oh. lesser rate if you stay a longer amount of time. Oh, well, it, it depends. Uh, what, how, how much for at least two nights for now? I'll give you two nights uh, each night. Time's rough. 50 cents a piece. So if you get a dollar, you can stay here for two nights. Yeah, well... Here you go. I'll give I'll give you a I'll give you a dollar fifty. The fifties for your troubles here. Thank thank you for being so generous. Oh, well, thank you kindly. Let me show you to your room. And she uh, goes and there's like a little little thing of hooks behind her. And she take you can see that there's like there's four like one two three four and all of them are there. And she takes one and uh, hands it to you. Actually, she walks with you down the hall, unlocks a door that has one and a little brass plate on it, opens the door and then hands the key to you and says, uh, this will be your lodgings for the night. There is no breakfast included. Thank you very much. And uh, you uh, get yourself some rest from your long tracks. Before, I, before you go here, I, I do have a question for you. I, I do hate to leave my mule outside in, on these cold nights. Is there any place where I could go and put him, put him up somewhere inside? Is there a barn uh, the, or There's uh, the Primrose Stables. We'll, we'll give you a spot for the night if you need to be a covered spot. We, we also do have around the side here for, for paying customers a, a small barn you could put your, your horse into. It's open in the front but it'll be a roof and a, a hitching post at the very least. Oh well thank you. I, will, I think I'm gonna go put him in the barn before I start resting up. Very well. You you get yourself some rest and have a wonderful night. Thank you. You too Miss Bell. Such a nice gentleman. Uh, going around, there is like it's attached to the side of this building. Basically, there's a small, it's a barn might be a nice word for it. It's like it's a roofed, open front area that has a kitchen post. So if it rains, the horse is dry. Um, can can I do a can I roll like a, a notice check to see if there's like any tables or kind of anything in this barn? Uh, yeah, go for it. I, you don't have to roll a notice check really. There, there's like a small wooden table, looks a little rickety but uh, could hold some stuff on it. Okay. Um, I'm going to hitch up hitch up Sam. That's my mule. I'm going to hitch up Sam. Uh, and uh, I'm going to start kind of unloading some of my uh, my, oil, my oils and my nitro and just putting them on the table. <laughs> but I'm also going to take uh, I have a blanket and I'm just going to cover that with the blanket so nobody so you load the table with explosives and cover them up with a blanket <laughs> yes throw a, Sounds little, good. throw a little blanket over it. <laughs> uh you don't think it looks like this place has not been frequented any time recently uh you're sure they'll be undisturbed unless someone's intentionally going after something and you'll think. know if they get disturbed that is a fact yeah i will know um and then if you uh if that's you you going back in uh to the i assume you're going back to your room after that uh, or I'll head to, to the I'll head to the saloon. Okay, you on your way to go maybe a I'll just little keep libation for the night. Around, but I'll head to the saloon. Okay, um, you're able to kind of just start heading down the road towards the saloon. You'll get there shortly after other individuals will be getting there because he went you went from the sheriff's office driving back across the street and walking up to this saloon. You know, you'll notice a couple different things. So uh, you can see that like the there's a there's a sign on the front of it. And it's, it looks like a, um, like it's, it's kind of the silhouette of a, like a cowboy head and a cowboy hat, but has a bullet hole through the hat. And like, it looks like someone shot a metal sign so there'd be a hole through the hat. And underneath it, it says the Lucky Ranger Saloon. That's my kind of saloon. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem very lucky. It seems like it went through the hat, not the head. Uh, maybe it's the joke they were going for when they put the <laughs> sign up there. Um, 
And entering in, you do hear uh, like some soft piano playing as you get a little closer. All right. Okay. And entering in, I assume. Yeah. How, how do you go in? Are you a uh, slam the doors open, stand there proudly, or like slowly open? You know, how, how, what's your entrance look like through some little doors? It not says a lot to, about it. <laughs> not here to cause a, any strife. I'll just open the door quietly and walk in. Okay. Inside, you'll see a number of people. Um, I assume, excuse me, are either of the two of you being locals to Raskatoon currently in the saloon? Excuse me. What time is it? It's like early night time, maybe 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, somewhere in that range. It doesn't matter, I won't be there anyway. You won't. <laughs> You're not there. Why do I think about it? I had to remember. Okay. So, at the saloon, you see sitting at the desk, polishing the glass in kind of classic bartender fashion. Uh, a middle-aged gentleman. You can see uh, a, a fairly jovial but ugly as hell looking feller on the piano who's just kind of batting away. It looks like he's just kind of the only person here who's really happy-go-lucky playing the piano. And uh, you see a scantily clad southern bell be a strong word for it. Maybe a <laughs> southern whistle or a southern... Floozy. A uh, floozy. And there's a, a woman of the night, a uh, harlot if you will, <laughs> <laughs> who is kind of leaned over the rail, looking also fairly bored. Um, looking like there's not a ton of business around here. Uh, and you see sitting at one of the tables, a person who appears to be just just like a younger male, a younger guy who's sitting there, has a, a drink in front of him that he's, it looks like, like a, a gl small glass of whiskey, and he's kind of sitting there just like swirling it. And he takes like a very tiny sip, sets it back down, <laughs> picks it up, swirl in it. Like very, she's savoring this for whatever reason. And you also see someone else who can uh, describe what they're doing and what they look like in this establishment. Well, I'm gonna be at the bar, of course, just having a good time on the cheapest whiskey. Okay, and you know that in this town, since you've been here, the cheapest whiskey is more expensive typically than a lot of other places' expensive whiskey. These. Due to supply and demand issues, it's not as cheap as it once was to drink in Raskatoon. So you're kind of having to pace yourself a little bit more than you'd like to, but uh, you had enough tape from recent work to uh, get a, a little buzz going at the very least by now. Oh, yeah. And what do you look like? Well, I'm a younger man. Uh, I have a scar on my left eye. I'm kind of disheveled, beard, long hair. Um, just working man, kind of. Kind of. <laughs> Look uh, like a working man, baby. <laughs> I have uh, dark brown hair, um, full beard, just uh, have a cigarette in one ear, and just. <laughs> like on the top. I, 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 yeah. I, 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 I <laughs> see that. Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> The wax helps it not fall off. They always slide off when I put them on the top of my ear. Smoking two cigarettes? I can't stand that piano player. <laughs> Maybe someone that possibly would look inside a car at night, but I'm not going to say too much more about that. Mm -hmm. um, just playing with, uh, fiddling with my deck of cards in my hand and my whiskey in my other. Okay. And that's what you see as you enter the saloon. And the, uh, the individual behind the bar, who's just finished pop, like refilling the glass of the person there with a cigarette in their ear, uh, <laughs> kind of goes back, like, kind of leans back over and looks over and kind of doesn't like squint like, I don't recognize you. Come on up here, feller. What's your name? Well, I'm James. Wondering if you know who has the key to the sheriff's office. James, you must be uh, our hero, our savior. John Kramer, owner and bartender of this fine establishment, shakes your hand. So that's Oscar on the piano. Oscar Roach, we just call him Roach. He just kind of waves, goes back to jovially playing. <laughs> and that's Miss Annalee Atkins up on the rail there. Welcome to the establishment. The key is, uh, I believe, with the mayor. Mayor Miles Tate, uh, I believe he has it with him at his estate just down the road. Well, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Kind of interest you in the drink? Uh, I'm considering myself still on duty at the moment, so no thank you. Drink one drink makes a man's senses sharper, from what my experience is. But now I respect that very much. Uh, if you're going to be the, the hero of this town, needs, uh, I suppose that that's 
An honorable mouse. There's a lot of pressure going on here. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, we were, we all loved our previous share very much, but he, I mean, rumor is he just bolted. He didn't want to deal with the trouble, couldn't handle the pressure. So, wouldn't be surprised if a man of less constitution would do the same. But you don't seem that type. You seem like an upstanding heroic sort. Well, thank you. I'm very, yeah, of course, of course. Sure, can I you a drink? I'm gonna shuffle on down to see Mayor T. And you hear a, a something else? She doesn't, she looks like someone who looks older than she is, but is trying to look younger than she looks. <laughs> so she's trying to look her she's age? She's trying to look her age and not doing a great job at it. It looks like she's a, she's a rough piece of rope. We'll put it that way. <laughs> you are not being kind. I am not being kind to L. Lionel Lee Atkins. Um, and you kind of start heading towards the door. And you, you hear this whole thing. Yeah. You say or do anything. You just mind in your own. I'm going to, once he skidows, I'll uh, you turn you turn and start walking towards the door and as you get there um how does the professor enter into a saloon because once again how a man walks into a saloon says a lot about his character jerry if you bang my hey. shins with that door i'm gonna have a problem <laughs> oh, no 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 i open the door kind i open the door pulling it towards pulling it towards me and i see you walking out and i go oh it's the youngin here, why don't you join me for a nice drink before the night's over? We did. We just spent a whole day traveling together. I apologize, Professor. I have other business to see to this evening. Well, I'll be and damned, you hear from behind the bar. Ten. Is that two new people in Raskatoon in one night? Both y'all come back up here. This is a moment for celebration. One drink on me. I really need to go well, find the mayor. A half shot for you, yeah. Sheriff. Of course, because you're on duty. I'll water it I, I down for you. I ain't got no water, though, so <laughs> it'll just be a smaller amount of alcohol. I'm watering it down with more whiskey. <laughs> Do the, I, I, I hear assume... a single word. I don't hear a single word the youngin says. I just go, fantastic, and I grab it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to think he's not hard of hearing at all. It's just selective. It's selective. He's not, he doesn't have bad hearing. He has selective hearing. Uh, two of you walk back up, so these two are now up at the bar. He, he The profession, more or less forces you to come along with him. And this guy puts out two small glasses, one of which is about half full of uh, dark, uh, he, uh, he half fills with a, a, a whiskey, and the other he like quarter fills with a whiskey, and slides him in front of the two of you. He says, and how about you, old timer? What brings you to Raskatoon? By the way, name is John Kramer, owner and bartender this final day. Reaches his hand across and shakes yours. I shake his hand and I go, What's your name again? I didn't quite catch that. John Kramer. Uh, and that's Roach. And Miss Emily Atkins up on the right. J Jane Cramble? Okay, it's nice to meet you. Uh, <laughs> I, Close I, enough. Here, Enjoy just, a drink. I'm Has this fellow been drinking already? Uh, I'm yeah, here in town right just here. visiting. <laughs> I had to get away from the city. I I, look, I grabbed a nice room over at the, at the inn. Uh, oh, the bell's joint, Gilliams, yeah. Fine establishment. Yeah, fantastic. I, I I plan on being in town for a couple days, maybe longer, depending on how things go. So, I heard Raskatoon was just very nice this time of year, so... Not sure you know who your travel agent is, brother, but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Raskatoon's on hard times, if you haven't heard. Now, I'm happy to have more people through town help get business up and running again, but that's going to rely more on our heroic sheriff over here than anything else to cause that to be available to us. Uh, but uh, there's been... Yeah, the natives around here have not taken kindly for whatever reason to us and have been hitting this town hard. You know, uh... I, I, I know it's hard to grow potatoes, but, I mean, you, you just got to find a way, man. You got to find a way, the well, earth... Uh, they come through and they, they... What little crops we've got around here, they tore up. There's the the uh, ranch down yonder across the creek over there, but uh, not much point in going over there. Donovan you, Faulkner, the greedy you need, bastard, you need won't a sell guard, you anything. You need a guard dog us. to kill them rabbits that's eating your crops. It's not rabbits what's eating our crops, Heller. It's, uh, it's uh, natives. Natives. Uh, and, and as I said, if you want, oh, you can go natives. try and get some more substantial food from the, the Nettlewood Grange down yon way, but... Uh, 
Donovan Faulkner's not going to part with anything without a hefty markup, greedy bastard. Okay. <laughs> Can I walk up and uh, uh, buy these two gentlemen a drink? You sure can. I, I'm good. <laughs> What's up, buddy? What's up, partner? Now listen. Can I have a word with you? No. <laughs> How about I buy you a drink? You and the professor. I'm sure the professor is, uh, would enjoy a drink. Would you like a shot of whiskey, Professor? What's your name? Josh? My name is Grimes. Grimes Deep Fingers. <laughs> I forgot that Deep Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, come, coming right up. I assume on your tab there, Grimes. Uh, yes. Of course, of course. Well, Two shots of whiskey. Well, you know what? I'm not, I'm not one to turn down an offer for a beverage. Oh, thank if you. I, if I think I heard you right, that's what you're offering. Yes. I'm afraid I don't. I'm afraid I don't deal in that kind of luxuries. If that's what you're also offering. Oh no 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure, Professor, whenever you're ready. <laughs> but I'm more interested in asking the new Sharon some questions. Well, I'm very busy. <laughs> so, uh, we'll have to make it quick. Like, why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> Something shifted on <laughs> Well, as I understand it, Rasputin's in a spot of trouble. Mm. It <laughs> certainly is, sir. It certainly is. But I'm going to want to know, are you the kind of man to, you know, turn a fly eye to some coin if uh, something happens, you know, around town, or are you just dealing with the native problem? Uh, I believe the native problem is my primary concern oh, okay. at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. It's at this point I lean over to to uh, to the youngin. Wait, is the youngin um, the corporal or is the youngin old deep fingers? Because they're both young. The the the, the corporal, the okay. corporal. I, I lean over to the youngin because he's the only one I really know. Youngin, I don't mean to I don't mean to alarm you, but I. I think this one may have some dastardly plans for you here, Dow. You best be careful. Thank you for your concern, Professor. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just being <laughs> super friendly. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry about anything, Professor. I will be your personal guide through this town. I know it inside out. Born and raised. With my mama still in town. Uh, uh, Bless her heart. <laughs> I mean, I mean, this town doesn't seem like one you could get lost in. I'm just saying. I mean, it depends. You can ask our old sheriff. That was awful threatening. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's this one man with the sheriff? But, no mind him. He's long gone. He couldn't deal with the native problem. But, I'm sure you and uh, the professor, mighty fine folk, can deal with that. Fine. Roach pipes up at this point. Well, Oscar Roach comes out. Yeah, well, this isn't the usual sort of crowd we got around here, so uh, any, uh, any requests? Would you like to play on these here keys? I really should be going. <laughs> All right, uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> he starts playing a song that he's got a kind of like a, a sing songy vibe to it, and he's just gonna. And already, already, really should be going. <laughs> uh, it's a hoedown. <laughs> the class. Grab a partner. Come on, man. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> makes any effort to grab a partner. But uh, Roach is having a great time. <laughs> he's a real party animal. Though. He's a party animal, uh, and this is unfortunately not a party zoo that he's inside <laughs> of at the moment. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm standing up and <laughs> leaving. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, you're going to stand up, start heading towards the door. Uh, here's where we're going to take a brief aside elsewhere in the small town of Raskatoon. Okay. To a fellow I assume being a, a godly man is uh, already asleep at this hour. 
<laughs> Would you like to go ahead and describe yourself and what you're doing at this hour night in the uh, small bedroom what's attached to your shop here in town, Sclerk? Mm. The Rasputin right. General Store, of course. Well, my name's Jefferson. I'm a reformed man, baptized ten years ago this, this summer. Run the run the shop, the, the Rasputin General Store. Been doing that for ten years as well. Yeah, just keep to myself. Uh, no family, no nothing. Just doing the Lord's work, go to church every Sunday. And as you know, it being Saturday today, early morning tomorrow, Sunday, you want to get a good night's right. sleep. Right. Oh, I'm definitely asleep. Of course. Yeah. You got to have a good night's sleep for the, for the morning service. Now, do you want to wait for me to reveal other things? Yeah, you don't need to reveal okay. anything okay. about your character. Just kind of well, and we, well, good, because that's all there is to my character. <laughs> There's nothing else going on. Good, because I was going to have to make something up right <laughs> Nobody here has any secrets. Clearly, <laughs> everyone is upstanding people. You can tell by their non-threatening demeanors. Um, you are asleep. Like I said, the general store has a kind of small bedroom attached to off the back of it, like a lot of stores at this time did. And you know the general stores had just plenty of ammunition to sell, though not most of that sold elsewhere in town. It's had plenty of you know, uh, you, you've had tobacco to sell, you've had your fair share of matches and tin cups and the average stuff that people need here and there, but food and drink has been hard to come by in Raskatoon for some time now. Luckily enough for you, you recently uh, gotten a small shipment of food that managed to kind of slip its way through. You had to pay an arm and a leg for it, but being a good person, you figured it could be some help for the people of town. It came in late this last uh, evening and you kind of locked it up in the shop but you're hoping tomorrow you can actually have some like canned food and stuff to put out on the shelves for the people of Raskatoon. You're sleeping happily in your bed and you hear a uh, kind of rustling going on out in your in your shop that wakes you. You kind of you get woken up like you feel like you hear a loud noise that wakes you up and then you kind of like come to and realize like it wasn't a dream loud noise, it's a real loud noise, and you hear something, someone, it sounds like something or someone moving around inside the shop. Well, uh, say a quick prayer. Oh. Or, well, see, you didn't do that because he, he's firmly Protestant. Oh, uh, <laughs> He does not do this Excuse thing. Me, sir, no, uh, no. How dare you? <laughs> firmly. He takes offense to that. <laughs> Luckily, I don't exist in that, in that world, except for in all the ways that I exist in that world. It says prayer. It says, Dear Lord, please keep your watch over me. I'm not, not a shop. Pick up the door inside. Do you know, Open the door to just kind of see the door of your shop kind of swinging. Like it's just been gone through. And it seems like somebody basically shoulder checked breaking your lock to get this door open, which is probably what you heard. And the the kind of dry food that the shipment that was next to the door tucked in in the locked shop is gone. And I just investigate around. That's all I Are you going like out front of the shop? Yeah, I go out front. Okay, you start moving towards the front of the shop. Elsewhere is in the town. You get to the. You finally make it to the front door of the saloon after them doing this, and you kind of swing the door open. To the the saloon kind of looks down this main stretch, and Raskatoon General Store is off to the right of this here. You don't know that, but what you do know is you look out to see a large, like almost like fairly hulking, shadowy shape walk out, kind of push through a door in a building down the way, and the door kind of swings hard as it comes through. It seems to be like. Like it has something up underneath one of its arms. Um, it's far enough away and in the dark. Go ahead and roll me a, a notice check. See what okay. you can. I won't yeah. cheat this time. Yeah, use your real. Do you have any ranks in notice? No. Okay, so it'll be at a minus two. Okay. If you don't have any ranks in notice, minus two on the total. So five total. Five total. Um, you're able to tell this thing is probably between six and seven feet tall, closer to the higher end of that, and it is broad and wide. Like at this distance, this is broader and wider than any person you've ever seen. And if the fact that you don't think this is at least any normal sized person wasn't enough, as you see this, this, this thing kind of like looks side to side and then jumps with enough of a jump to make it onto the roof of an adjacent building and then off of that over beyond your field of vision. 
Good lord. <laughs> you run outside of your shop to see a shadowy shape land on a roof in front of you. It's still far enough away that you... It's, it's still dark enough out here that you can't make out details, just big and lumbering. And then it kind of clamber over the uh, end of that other building it was on top of and out of your line of sight as well. And you see an individual run out of the store behind this thing. Well, good lord. And he's, he's down like a pretty way, far ways down the street from you here if you want to go talk to him. Yeah, you I'll, can uh, holler pretty loud for him to hear I'll you. Get the, I'll get the horse and <laughs> move that away. You start moving that away. So you see somebody approaching with a horse. Well, hello there, feller. Seems like you were just the victim of a robbery, sir. Yes, unfortunately. It was a town rascatoon. Devil's got his hands firmly on top of it. What did he take, if you don't mind me asking? Well, got a pretty valuable sh- shipment of some food. It's hard to come, r- come around these days here in Rascatoon. Must have busted in, just run off without it. Or with it. Well... I'll be looking to go investigate, if you don't mind coming with me. Well, I reckon so. Well, I'm... Corporal Mohan. Eh, is it Mo- Mohan? How did I say it before? Mohan. I Mohan. Mean, sorry, sorry. Corporal Mohan. I'll be the acting sheriff of this town. You are? Huh? Good to meet you, sir, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mohan. <laughs> Name's Jeffers. Run this shop here. Rask Dean, been here for ten years. All right, Mr. Jeffers, well, if you have a firearm, I'd suggest you take it with you. You can use my rifle otherwise. And no. can... I'm afraid I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm a pacifist, I cannot. Ah. No, I, would, I do not take up my arms. Well, an extra set of eyes would help me tremendously, if you wouldn't mind coming with me. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, well, I'll move in that direction. Okay, so you start heading that way and uh, kind of have to round the building across from you there. Looking at it, right, um, you can see a sign across the street from the building you just landed on, uh, and it says Gilliam's Room and Board on it. Um, so it's, it's across the street from the general store. And you kind of go around the other edge of it, and you can see, if you look at the map really quickly, behind Gilliam's Room and Board, not that you know what these three buildings are, there's kind of these three spread out buildings that are not on the main track. Right. Um, so this is the building it landed on, jumped over to this. Uh, looking kind of round in that corner, the two of you, go ahead and both give me some notice. All right, how does this work again? So, your no- what, what is your notice skill? Mm-hmm. D6. Okay. You know, D6, so you'll roll two D6, and you'll use whichever one is higher. That The extra D6 is your wild die. You get to roll that with all your checks. Oh, okay. So whatever your skill is is one die, and the other one's always a D6 is your wild die. And sixes you roll again. And yeah. add. So if you so roll a six, it, it, it explodes. So you get to roll it again, and you add them together. Okay. If you get the six just on a d six or a four on a d four, yeah, just, just the one. just the one that exploded. Yeah. Eleven. Eleven. <laughs> yeah. What's yours? What's your minus two? One. One. <laughs> so you you run out there and look. You're like oh, sharp geez. eyes. Shit. And you kind of come out, and you're you're pretty eagle eyed. You focus in, look, and you can see that. Uh, you can see a small creek on the map here. Uh, you can see the shape of this thing kind of disappearing just beyond that creek, which means that it covered guy uh, in in the last like ten seconds or so. It probably covered three to four hundred yards. Like it, uh, this thing's moving supernaturally fast. And it seems it, it is well beyond uh, a range. I mean, you don't even see the thing, and you think even. Even if he could, he probably wouldn't have a good shot on it from here, as it's kind of disappearing into the night. Seems to run past Nettlewood Grange across the way there. Well, I hate to say it, but I think your goods have made a quick escape. Also with an 11 really quick escape. You do notice one can that's on the ground that seems to have fallen out of the package here as it landed. Well, well I pick it up. It's been easy. Well, don't think this is gonna feed the whole town of Raskatoon. Shame. Maybe the good Lord will provide anyway. Well, I will continue to investigate, but I think I'll have to wait until the morning so I can follow the tracks. Well, let me know if you need anything, Sheriff. I'm here for the town. Well, I appreciate it. Mr. Jeffers. Jeffers. Thank you. I guess I'll 
head towards the mayor's uh, the mayor's house. It's oh, there. pretty wait, close by. As he walks away, I say, "The sheriff, mm. you a church going feller?" I certainly believe in God. Well, we're having a service here tomorrow morning. We we mind find if you showed up. I'll do my best. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see tomorrow morning. Alright. We'll head for head for the mayor's house. <laughs> Once again. It's pretty close and again looking at the map there you where it was described to you, it's the the big building. And it also has a little bit of stonework on the bottom floor of it. It's the only really other building that does. Yeah, I guess if we're here, we probably... Uh, so yeah, you kind of go straight across over there to the mayor's estate. No, you um, don't add And walk up to together. the door there. There's like, there's not guard as opposed to anything yeah, like so that. Like, so, like, whatever dice you're house. Rolling, you, um, it's essentially two different Seems places. like an older building, too, compared to um, the other thing. It has like so a like, stonework piece to it. I mean, so, like, um... Knocking, yeah, so you've noticed was a D6. But there's a moment, there's lights on. So if you were rolling uh, shooting... A light right. comes on as you knock. It seems like people were asleep in there. Possibly, maybe some... And someone... And then another D6. A gentleman opens the door. And the man you see in front of you... And then anyone... Then if it is the mayor, you're like, max, damn, this guy doesn't look like a mayor. And you keep doing that. You can see... As long as it keeps rolling back. You'll get that Yeah, it's kind of weird because you don't add them together. They're like two separate rolls. Which and gets... Take the better so th- and then if both of them explode is when it really gets complicated because then you're like, okay, this is a, this is a D6 and, and this is a D8, but they both exploded, so I have to roll both of them again, but I have to keep the two rolls separate so I know which one is higher by the end of it. The door swings open, and the man you see in front of you, I would only be able to describe as a mountain of a man with an exceptionally hairy face. Um, the door kind of swings open and there's this tall kind of lumbering figure says, Don't you know it's the middle of the goddamn night? Who the hell are you? And looking at him like, when I say extremely hairy face, I don't mean he looks like, like a, an ape or something like that. Like, he's one of those guys who has a beard that just climbs really high up on his cheeks and makes no effort to keep it trimmed. So it's like long and kind of bushy down there. Uh, but he seems fairly big and, and, and a pretty imposing gentleman. You know. They elected. So All dressed the late hour, uh, mayor. Corporal James Mohan. Corporal? You ranger? Yes, sir. You must be the fella they're sending to come the new sheriff thing. Mayor will want to meet with you, but probably some point tomorrow during the day. He's asleep at this point, but I can get you the key to the sheriff's office. You got a place to rest your head at the very least. He reaches his hand out to shake yours. And yeah, sure. Name's Eli Spears, right hand man of the mayor. Well, thank you for understanding, Mr. Spears. Nods, shakes your hand, and turns into closing the door behind him. But did he give me the key? No, there's a little bit of time. He comes back. Okay. He didn't have it on. That's, I <laughs> had to go in the junk drawer. So, I'll let the mayor know you're here. You come by around midday tomorrow. Uh, you should see him here. Fair enough. Good night, Sheriff. Good night. Closes the door. All right. I'll head back to the Sheriff's office. Okay. Open it up. <laughs> you open it. Off. It looks the same as it did before. You can see that there, there is another door in there that opens into like a bedroom. It's got like it's a cot. <laughs> it's a it's a bed and it's got a trunk at the foot of the bed and a uh, little set of drawers. And that's it. Well, I guess Basic. I'll just do my do what I need to do to turn in for the night. Pack okay. away my stuff and set up my coffee and. <laughs> This <laughs> getting ready for bed stuff in the old west. Mm-hmm. Don't sleep with my boots on. Of course. Uh, cutting back to the drink, anybody? Well, almost. Oh, uh, I'll almost agree. So this surprise me. Yeah, yeah and there won't be a man's in either. That's fine. And w- I'm actually. Will, will I, yeah, I, I would love, I would love a drink. Okay, will <laughs> you can I, surprise I me or something? Corner, I could just put something in Thank the mail every time. Jerry, yeah. that's not. Hey Jerry, hey Jerry, you want something to drink? Robot Jerry? Yeah, I, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll take some. Real Jerry? Is this like Sprite in here or something? Real Jerry so, here, and I like Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> or in, or, For those of you who are uh, in the uh, uh, saloon, the beverage that we are not sponsoring. Uh, surprise. Oh, okay. <laughs> surprise. Uh, I was holding that a little tight. I was a little tight. That's when you just grab some and throw it in. Uh, <laughs> Yes, sir. That's <laughs> um, I, I grabbed it. I was like, oh, no. So uh, you are still in the establishment, I should say. I should I should go by people's names. Uh, Professor Bogus and Old Grimes Deep Fingers are still in the uh, saloon. He leaves it. Uh, the two of you are still there. What, what are you doing for the rest of the night? When do you retire? What, what's what's um, the moment? So I'm just uh, chilling out of the saloon till closing time, so I can go home. Not make sure she's doing. 
Okay. How about you, Professor? I make my way back to the inn, but I don't go to my room. I go to the barn to to deal in some uh, to deal with some of my oils and nitros, and you know, try to do some tinkering for the night. Okay. So they're undisturbed, blankets still over the top of them, uh, and you uh, can do a little bit of tinkering and experimentation for the night. Is there something specific you want to accomplish, or are you just kind of doing some general maintenance and taking a look at stuff? Uh, I'm doing some I'll, I'll, I'm doing some general maintenance, kind of tinkering with uh, a weapon I'm cre- or uh, what seems like a little pistol that I'm creating. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to do some tests with it. It's as this now seems like an actually good place for me to do my experiments. You certainly seem to be, this seems like a good place for somebody to do mad science experiments because it's out in the middle of nowhere. Blows up the whole town yep. of Raskatoon, can't pay me. I'm gonna just do that, Whoops. maybe you survive. <laughs> well, with our luck, Will's just gonna be the family dog again. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be no help. Um, so, a little bit of experimentation, and then you retire for the night, and you go till closing time, and uh, your your mother's home is a little outside of the main strip of town. It's not on, excuse me, it's not on the map itself, uh, but you're able to go and retire for the evening in your old childhood room. Uh, bed's a little small for you, and it's decorated much the same as it was when you left, which is not at all, because it's the Wild West, but uh, it's, it's comfortable enough, a good place to lay your it's not a race car bed. It's not a race car bed. No. I feel like we have a I have a Bates Motel situation. <laughs> um, and then next morning, uh, early, early in the morning, is what well, I guess morning comes. What what kind of time frame would those of you here be waking up? You early risers. The crack of dawn. Crack of dawn. Uh, the crack You're sleeping in late. Yeah, the late yes. night drinking. The crack of dawn. Crack of dawn. You gotta get to church. You gotta be first in line. Get the best seat. Yeah. Front pew. Um, and how about you, Professor? Crackadon. Crackadon. Uh, 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 and despite working on tinkering for several hours in the night, I still get up at the Crackadon. Okay. Um, so waking up, are you, where, where are you heading in the early morning, uh, Corporal? I'm going to head out to where I lost the trail. Okay. Or where I, I guess where I failed my notice check. <laughs> try to get a better look at it. Try to, try to yeah, see if I can use survival to like notice tracks on the ground. Okay. Uh, you kind of step out of the front door, and as you step out of the front door, you see someone riding into town. Looks like from the same direction you did the night before. And I'd like that individual to go ahead and describe themselves, please. Uh... Good lord, how's a dog riding a horse? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also a dog in a tiny cowboy hat, mm-hmm. so... So it's adorable. That's how he's doing it. Adorably. <laughs> I'm just sitting in the saddle. The horse is just walking itself into town. Um, it's like that dog on the skateboard. Uh, um, young lady, like late teens, maybe early 20s. Um, like dark hair, but cut pretty short and not like clean cut short like looks like it was probably done with a knife not scissors um uh pretty like travel worn um duster long coat um a uh um <laughs> a, a fairly small painted pony um with a very long rifle on it um and a um Kind of a like permanent, ang- almost like slightly angry expression, and um, probably even at a distance, pretty obvious like leather strip tied over the left eye. Um, and the I had pretty well loaded down, I guess the horse wise at least like loaded um, loaded saddlebags and um, um, lots of like like trail gear and stuff. Like that. Okay. How far? How far away? Uh, you walk out, if you look at the map, uh-huh. Sheriff's Office, he's, uh, she is riding in between the post office and Brothers Barber right now, so he's straight down the street from you. Okay. Probably 50 feet, 60 feet away. Look at the away. I'll ride over to the Sheriff's Office. Okay. 
the walking out, you see somebody who's got a, from the distance you can see the gleam of a badge on them. You don't know exactly what type it is until you get a little closer. Uh, this lady on her painted pony rides up in front of you, and at this range you can tell he's got a ranger badge, not like a generic sheriff badge. I probably can't tell the difference. That's true. Can't read. No, for me. <laughs> okay, great. Howdy, man. You the sheriff? Acting sheriff? What happened to the previous sheriff? Gone. Up and up and disappeared. Uh, that's slightly less useful. I was here in Raskatoon that's dealing with some strange problems. Well, that's uh, why I'm here. Raskatoon's dealing with some problems and old sheriff left, so here I am. It's a uh, James Mohan. Corporal James Mohan. Ed Parnell. Miss Parnell, good to meet you. You don't mind me asking, what's your business in town? <laughs> Actually, you gotta act like you've been here before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right? I've been, for all you know, I've been sheriff for the last 20 years. <laughs> well, I'm, um, sort of a hunter and tracker. You are afraid? Looking to, uh, like I said, I understand Raskatoon's been dealing with some strange problems. I figured I'd might be well suited to solve them. Well, it's funny you should come into town at the right time. Just last night, I had a burglary over at the general store. The feller was moving awfully fast. It was awfully big. Uh, I was about to head out and check down some tracks if you wanted to come with me. I'd be happy to come along. Well, don't know if you need to stop for any breakfast or nothing, but I've got some coffee back in there. Coffee would be fine, I guess. All right. Get some coffee. (laughs) Each out a little tin cup of coffee uh, from the sheriff's office. Uh, Back to the... uh, I think probably especially once I'm off the horse. Like, I am not a tall person. (laughs) (laughs) You're small. Very tiny. Um, you guys moving in to grab coffee. We're going to cut down the street as uh, two people leave their res- as their respective establishments almost simultaneously. One Professor Bogus and one Jeffries uh, walk out of buildings across the street from each other. Jeffries, you see a strange old man who's definitely new to town. And Jeffries, you see a townsman. <laughs> old townsfolk. You see an NPC. You see probably a PC. Now you need to hold your initial trigger when you're playing Red Dead and you see a suspicious NPC and not just shoot the dead in the middle of the street. Just make sure you don't mix up what, buttons what between you drawing me? and uh, like shooting and emoting so you don't accidentally shoot off a Vaquero's kneecap and start a big ball that ends up with the building across the street exploding with that. I, tried now, to I, don't like, know, I don't know if the explosion in the hotel was related to the bar fight with the Vaqueros. <laughs> both included the Vaqueros. So both, the Vaqueros were there for both of them. That's true. Anyway. I, I see him. I say, well, hey there, fella. You must be new to town. Well, yes, I am. I just arrived last night. Well, that's wonderful. What brings you here to Raskatoon? Well, uh, I, I'm just here traveling. I tried to get away from the city. Yeah, uh, I, just a little bit too chaotic. Had to. I heard Raskatoon was nice this time of year, so I decided to come pay it a little visit, and I'm very much enjoying the town. Very friendly. I was never much for the for the city either. The devil's mighty mighty strong there. I'd, I might say. Well, speaking of the devil, well. <laughs> Well, I'm heading right there to church. You want to come with me? I don't know if you're a religious man. I am not. I do. Apo- I, I do apologize, but I do not believe in in things of the spiritual or religious nature. Not to be rude. Well, suit yourself. I. I mean, God changed my life. That that's 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 His honest truth. But, well, you're welcome anytime. Uh, p- but before before you leave, Mister. Oh yes, of uh, course. Uh, 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 I'll introduce myself. I I I am Professor Bogus. Oh. Uh, yes, Mister Bogus. Are you is is this? I shake your hand. Is this by chance your general store here? Why well, it is? Well, ain't much of one right now. 
but by chance at some point could i come by and just peruse what you have here at the store later on when you're not busy well well of course yes we open up here at uh well we don't open on sundays but you know lord's the lord's day uh, well we'll get you suit up here uh, monday morning for sure any wake up or open at the crack of dawn but well that's fine uh but if you don't mind me asking it Looks like your, your door here has been, uh, looks like something has just bolted right through it. What happened? There's been weird things got around this part. Uh, I, I mean, I think it's the devil's work himself. You know, you know anything about demons, Mr. Bogus? I don't know anything about demons, but I do, I do declare that there could be some, uh, explainable circumstances for this uh but i won't bore you with it it probably would not be something you would be interested in hearing I i'll let you go on about your day thank you for chatting well good to meet you don't be a stranger shake your hand shake your hand <laughs> keep track. Uh, okay. we're, we're close okay uh so you just were you looking for a character sheet or do we have a blank one yeah. to slide down to me? Just so I wanted so, the skills yeah. in front of me, just so I can make sure I remember all those. As uh, as Jeffer as Jeffords is walking away, can I like take a closer look at the door, like at the damage? Yeah, go ahead and take anything? a peek at it. Was uh, that a yes? You kind of broke up there. Uh yes, you can. You can definitely okay. take a peek at it there. Uh, looking at it, it looks like. I right, actually um hmm, is there like a specific skill not science is there like an engineering i have a repair there's skill re yeah there's repair. repair go ahead and roll me a repair hey, maybe i'll see if i can fix his door for him okay that's fine uh seven seven um so you're you're a fairly engineering wise person it looks like somebody shoulder checked this door and busted it open um it it seems like to repair this, like he's got like a deadbolt lock basically on it, and that bolt blasted through the wooden frame. So it probably had to be just a repair job on the frame to make it functional again. Uh, you can also see that the door itself has a pretty good crack in the middle of it. Not something that's ruining the integrity, but it looks like a pretty hard amount of force definitely slammed into this thing. Hmm. I, I wonder, whoever came charging at this door that night, last night, must have really had a good, had a lot of momentum behind his shoulder check. You think about the, uh, like the physics behind it, and you're like, if a big enough feller had enough of a run up, he could definitely do this. It's very long. He could definitely do it. Uh, it looks like the, the deadbolt was also in need of repair, so it seems like possible, it seems very possible that, that it just gave way despite the impact or it would have given way regardless of how the impact on the door i mean it's an old building the frame's old the wood's old it's it's, it's all very much logical something like that could happen <laughs> uh and uh cutting away from you all back down walking out of the sheriff's office two folks freshly caffeinated uh start heading their way down towards where this thing was last night i assume still so you guys start walking down the street and you see there's a number of people kind of leaving the building but leaving buildings and stuff like that but one that's walking straight towards you is jeffries on his way to church i assume morning mr jeffries oh morning sheriff good to see you again how'd you sleep like a rock <laughs> yeah well like the dead it's a damn cheerful time <laughs> Well, I'm glad to hear that. Do you have any any luck catching, catching that mysterious devilish creature? Well, we were just headed down to the last known location to see if we can't do some tracking. Well, keep me updated. We'll do. Feel free to catch up after church if you like. Oh yeah, maybe I will. You know, I don't want to work too hard though. Come on, Lord's that's day. the Lord's day. <laughs> You know, you know, the good Lord himself said, man was made, or man was not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for the man. Well, he quoted that with more assuredly. <laughs> 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 I should know that. <laughs> Anyways. All right. 
and to you he heads uh jeffers heads his way on into church um and the two of you head your way over to the uh, landing zone of whatever this thing was the night before yep. and i think with that that's where we're going to call the first episode of this as you guys are heading to kind of get on the get on the trail of this creature and um i guess we will uh We'll call it there, and we'll see you guys next time. We might be wearing very similar clothing next time, but uh, this is the first episode, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.